Job chapter 7. Hallelujah. It says, Is there not a time of hard service for a man on earth? Are not his days also like the days of a hired man? Like a servant who earnestly desires the shade, and like a hired man who eagerly looks for his wages. All right, so first two verses. I just want you to see <coughs> how the Bible describes people without God. And uh, you see, in this world, people are slaves. Because God has set himself, because of sin of Adam, he says, with the sweat on your brow, you're going to work hard to make the living. Amen? And this is, as we see, as it says... It's a hard service for men on earth. <coughs> His days are like the days of a hired man. Like a servant who earnestly desires the shade. And like a hired man who eagerly looks for his wages. <coughs> Listen carefully. This is what I'm going to be talking about. Two things, that a higher man, he's hired, and he's working for his wages. He's looking for his wages. It's in verse 2. Are you with me here? The Bible speaks about hired men and servants and the sons of God. The children of God. And many times when we come into the kingdom, into the kingdom of God, unless we've been taught. Listen to me, it's very important to understand, unless we've been taught by the word of God, we could still act as slaves. Even we feel the gentleness and the goodness of God and His Spirit and His grace and His presence, we still could act as a slaves. As slaves. Do you know why? Because the presence of God is not enough for you to be changed. We are changed in the presence of God when we add the Word of God to it. So the knowledge and understanding of the Word of God is very important. This is why a lot of people today, they are still struggling in their faith and in their life in many ways, in many cases, because they don't know exactly what the Word of God says. And secondly, they do not apply what the Word of God says. So, when people come after they're born again, they feel good, they feel wonderful if they're born again. It's an amazing experience because you're coming into the presence of God. But then the Word of God has 66 books to learn. Some of us, we never read that many books in our life. 66. But the Bible contains 66 books and they have different amount of chapters in it. And we call it the Word of God because the Word of God now has that instruction that we might realize and understand how to apply. How to apply. All right? Look at again what it says carefully. When you think what the Word of God says, remember... 
that the Word of God is the most powerful information on earth for any man. You got this? Amen. It's the most powerful information. And I know that you know that. But do you apply that? I know that we know. But when it comes for the robber meets the road, what, what happens? When we apply the word of God, it becomes the most powerful source for you. Amen? Amen? Therefore, when we find something very interesting, as it is speaking to your soul in the word of God, you need to look into this carefully. Because God is speaking to you about something that you need to hear now to set you free. And the Bible says that a servant and a hired person is looking for rest, is looking for to be uh, paid, is looking for all these things as... The Bible declares. Why do you think the hired person is looking for this? Why do you think a hired person is looking, actually, as it says, um, desire for a shade to rest somewhere, to lay down, maybe to even stay away from work for a little bit, and looks for his wages. Because for the hired man, what he does, it's a hard work. It's maybe the work that he doesn't really like to do. Is that right? It's something that he's not enjoying. He's trying to get away from that. He's trying to get some rest. He's trying to push that thing away. And also, he's working because of the wages. That's how things are in this life. But imagine you come into Jesus, you're born again, with the same mentality that you've been before or had before in the world. Amen? And the mentality that we had before, if we're going to carry on into our new life, will allow us to expect the same thing. All right? will allow us to, have to, to, to expect the same thing. And I'll explain to you what I mean. We need to learn how to rely on God and how to trust God and not to be slaves or hired servants in His kingdom. And I will today explain to you the difference between being a slave and a hired servant and be a child. It's two different things. Do you remember the story of the prodigal son? Prodigal son made a huge mistake by asking his daddy to give him what daddy owns him. He knew it's his portion. Right? He knew that was his portion. And he wanted to get his portion before time that when dad will release that and give for a good cause, he said, well, let me use it now. You remember this story. That's another interesting illustration of not to be a son, but to be a slave. Give me what you own me. Even if you are my dad, but give me what you own me. Means that child was not enjoying any longer to be in a house, to be protected, amen? To work for his dad, to be faithful to his dad, knowing that his father is laying aside the wages that he's working for, however, 
and the blessings that his dad has as an inheritance. By the way, it was not just the wages that he was working for, okay? It was an inheritance that his dad had. All right? The wages and inheritance, two different things. The wages is something that you're working for a day or a month, and you receive exactly what you work for an hour. But an inheritance is something that you did not deserve. It comes to you as an inheritance. <coughs> so I want you to see the difference now between these things. When you came to Jesus, God owns you nothing. <coughs> Amen? Amen. Amen? God owns you nothing, but He has an inheritance for you. If you will have this mentality, your life will be changed drastically. He owns you nothing. He doesn't have to do anything for you. None at all. It was good enough that he has saved your life and mine. Amen? Amen? But we come from the world. We come in from the place where everybody was owning something to somebody. And we got used to these things. You work, you got paid. Give me. I did something for you. It means in return you're going to have to do something for me. And I'm not going to do things for nothing. Change this mentality. Change it. Because in the kingdom of God, it doesn't run like that, that way. God doesn't run that way. God did not call us to be his hired servants that he owns us uh, something for what we do. And by the way, let me tell you something. It is an interesting point. I was thinking about myself. I was as as a servant of Christ, as as a as 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 as, as a minister of the gospel. I serve Jesus. Amen. Amen. I serve God. Yes. And you know what? If I will present to God the bill for what I'm doing, He would say, "I'm not gonna pay you nothing because I don't like the way you do things." You understand? Mm -hmm. He may bring some causes. If I will start asking God to pay me for the things I do, he'll say, wait a minute. If you want me to pay for the things you do, you got to be perfect and do exactly what I say. You see the difference? Do you see the mercy of God now? We cannot call ourselves just servants and hired servants and ask of God to give me something because I have done something. No, God said it will never be good enough in my eyes for what you do. Never. This is why I brought mercy and I gave you something else. You did not become my servant or hired servant because angels are hired servants that I have. And they do things exactly what I say. You cannot. You are my child and you are learning how to walk in my ways. Not just serving me. You're learning. Do you understand what I'm trying to say today? Here's the difference. When we change this mentality, we become humbled and say, Lord Jesus, my goodness. I, there's nothing, that, I cannot please God just by the things that I do because I'm not a hired servant. God has given me and you the opportunity and merciful opportunity to do what we do for Him. But remember another thing, as in a prodigal son situation, the father didn't pay the son, but he had an inheritance. Before even have, before the son even was, or maybe right after he was born, he said, I got two sons, and I'm going to divide my kingdom between the two. Whether they work for me or not, they are my kids, they are my children. Amen? So we are not being paid, or God does not own us anything, but God 
is holding an inheritance for you and I. And that inheritance, I'll tell you, is much greater and much more powerful than what we sometimes ask in God for. Our service. Amen? Amen? Let me explain to you what I mean by asking God for our service. We sometimes make God liable to do things for us because he has promised. There's two different things, faith and praise and demand and covetousness. Amen? we got to be careful how we approach God. we got to understand that we are not hired servants and God owns us nothing. But when we came to Christ, when we came to God, we have an inheritance and only God can release this inheritance into our life. Is that right? Yes. Amen. Only God can release. Only His mercy. Therefore, when God is not doing what we ask, He knows why. A lot of people get ha getting hurt uh, of God. They get frustrated and get this and that, that God didn't give, God didn't do, God didn't fulfill, and they move on. Not understanding that they becoming like a prodigal son by asking God to give them their inheritance now because they think that they would like to use it right away. But what happens, as a prodigal son, as you know the story, he wastes it all. If that would be in a father's hands, the waste would not be. It would be just equally given. And when the, the boy will come to his senses, when he'll grow up and the father will... Uh, uh, you see, the thing is this, if the boy would hold on for a moment and stay another year or two, however, whatever it happened, he would be in the father's house while the earth was struck with what? With famine. Do you remember that story? He sold everything, the earth was struck with famine, and nobody had nothing to eat. That's how he ended up eating with pigs. But if he would be staying in his father's house, trusting the, his father, knowing that the father has inheritance, and by the way, while the earth was struck with that problem, his father still kept the same inheritance for his son. Can you imagine? The earth was absolutely in poverty, and his two sons are rich at the same time. Because... Nothing was wasted, nothing was demanded, because the father had an inheritance and kept it for them. This is why I want to say it doesn't matter what happens in this life. It doesn't matter what happens in this uh, 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 economy. God has an inheritance for us. Amen. Protection. God has blessings. God has all the answers. And he's keeping, listen to me, he's keeping, he's keeping all the answers for the time when it's needed to, to, uh, to, to bring these answers manifesting. Did you, did you understand what I said? Yes. God is keeping all the answers, sometimes for us, for the time when these answers needed to be manifesting. So don't rush God. Don't demand from God that He owns us something. Just follow Him. Trust Him. Because as soon as you begin to demand, God says, Oh, you're acting as a hired servant. You want me to pay you? Here's your pay. Have it. You would not be satisfied. Do you want... God to pay you now what, he, you, what God thinks you deserve? Or you want to receive God's inheritance as mercy? Tell me. You see the difference? Well, friends, that was another interesting uh, message that God has given me. Uh, it's not all, always about faith. Faith without patience is not working at all, actually. If we just confess and believe and believe for our own sake... 
and it just believe, but when things are not happening the way we believe, we're losing patience, and that's where the problem is. And God sometimes is not giving us an answer for that reason. We have to understand that for that reason. So let us be um, truthful about the Word of God. Let us stand in truth. If you have faith, if you believe God, continue to believe. Don't lose uh, your faith and uh, just uh, throw the towel, as I may say. But it's through faith and patience we shall inherit the promises of God. And this is what God says. We're not against faith. We are for it. And we believe God for everything. I mean, we, with my wife, we had 25 years or so in a ministry, and we um, completely and totally walk in by faith. But we've learned another thing that is added to faith that is, according to the Word of God, that is patience. Patience. We need a lot of patience because God... While he's working things out, we need to trust him. And actually, patience is another wonderful thing because it is connected to trust. It is always connected to trust. While we have patience until God is coming up with his answers, we trust in God that God is going to do it. Praise be to God. So we just have patience. Amen. So again, through faith and patience, we shall inherit the promises of God. We have some wonderful testimonies coming from our television program as well, that people are getting healed. And, uh, well, I just want to believe for your miracle today. And you can give us a call and we'll pray for your miracle. But I want to make this announcement today, as you know already probably, that we are going to be in Ottawa for our next Revival Miracle Meetings, 24th and 25th of July. 24th and 25th of July. As you can see on your screen, the all information. Don't miss this opportunity. Maybe you're living in, uh, somewhere in the surrounding area of Ottawa as well. Just come. And uh, we're going to bring the team with us. And we, we, we believe God for a great outpouring of the Spirit over there. And as I said before, that we are looking toward revival and for revival. So who knows? Maybe Ottawa is going to be the place for revival to begin with. So here's the information, and 24th and 25th of July, and as you can see on the screen where it's going to be, and what time, at 7 p.m. each night, Friday and Saturday, and come and join us at, this, at the Ottawa room there in that hotel. So uh, Friday night and Saturday night at 7 p.m. Well, thank you so much for watching our program today. And uh, a lot of people are signing up right now to be partners, and you know what people like? our magazine form of newsletter type and we send in every month uh, our newsletter now is on, like a magazine form in a magazine type booklet type form and I put my teachings there and all the other information so why don't you sign up today and receive for free we're gonna send you free every month our booklet type magazine and uh, well you will enjoy all that God is doing through this ministry as well of, I, I mean, newsletter ministry. So thank you so much, and we appreciate your support. Honestly, we just stand in by faith and trust in God, and uh, thank you so much for your support. Thank you for coming back to our ministry. Thank you for renewing your support, and uh, thank you for standing with us. We do need your support, even today. So maybe you can send us your gift right now. Thank you so much. God bless you. Shalom to you. Give us a call. We'll pray with you, and see you tomorrow for the next episode. Bye-bye. God, hallelujah, you magnify your name, precious Jesus, hallelujah, precious God, precious Jesus, come on, let's praise him, let's give him the glory, hallelujah, precious Jesus, hallelujah, Lord God, awake, 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 Oh, Zion, awake. Thank you, Lord God. I say awake, awake, put on your strength, oh, Zion. Put on your beautiful garment, O Jerusalem, the holy city. Shake off the dust and arise. See now heavens, the joyful of earth. 
and break out singing on mountains. For the Lord has comforted his people Israel, and he will have mercy on Zion. Awake, awake, put on your strength, O Zion. Put on your beautiful garments, O Jerusalem, the holy city. Shake up the dust in the eyes. I say awake, awake, put on your strength, O Zion. Put on your beautiful garments, O Jerusalem, the holy city. Shake up the dust in the eyes. Sing your heavens, be joyful, O earth, and break out singing the mountains. For the Lord has comforted his people Israel, and he will have mercy on Zion. Away! Away! Call on your God, he will give an answer. Call on your God. He will answer you when you call on your God. He will give an answer. Call on your God. Call on your God. He will give an answer. Call on your God. He will answer you when you call on your God. He will give an answer. Call on your God. In that day, in that day, in that day when answer you in that day in that day in that day when you call on your God call on our God he will give an answer call on our God he will answer us when you call on our God he will give an answer call on our God in that day in that day in that day Answer us in that day, in that day, in that day when you call on our God. Away! Hallelujah, Lord. Oh, sing, O oh heavens, be joyful, O oh earth. And break out singing on mountains For the Lord has comforted His people Israel And He will have mercy on Zion Awake! 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 Hallelujah! House of David Jewish Messianic Ministry is produced and sponsored by viewers like you. We appreciate your support, which is allowing us to continue to broadcast our programming. Thank you, and God bless you. Shalom.